Yeah, I, I can see that style working for you in the in the long run, you know? Yeah, yeah. Morning everybody. Just packing up the car. We're heading north. Just a seven hour drive today. Not sure Matt needs that anymore. Lots of people saying that Sergio will win another major, which is nice to hear. I hope he does. I don't think he will, but I hope he does. Today's question, post comments down below as always. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're liking the daily vlogs. Why does milk have to run out? People talk about data sets on review videos. How many shots is enough for a data set? And what do you think those people are looking for? Like what extra answers do you think they're looking for? Go on, that's the real question. Post those comments down below. That's coach, we have collected him. Got his luggage. Make it neat back there, bruh. Right, first swing ideas today. If we watch the face of the club, it definitely wants to twist a bit to the sky. Backswing coming down, it wants to twist over quite a lot on the way through. You can see it's very uh, turned here on the way through. So people who struggle with pulls, he's telling me struggling with pull shots. They have got two options for me in a lesson. They need to get their path going more right. So if you think about it, let's say the face is three degrees close to a path. His path now needs to be six right for him to be in target. Bear with. I'm trying to film a video here. Or they need to try and calm down that face in relationship to path, which, so we're gonna give you an idea of how to calm both of those things down or work with both of those. So let's talk the club path fix first. So what I see a lot of people who pull balls, is they have quite a consistent dispersion, so they're at target and slightly less. So if you were to drop a pin, you would drop it, say, five to 10 yards left of the flag. And I always challenge them to think this way. So I'm not saying this is the answer, but for me, if I'm hitting shots which are good with slight pull, but I'm striking them where I quite like them, I'm always gonna aim more down the right side. I see so many amateurs thinking they need to aim at the target. If you think about it, if you're shaping a shot, you should only be aiming at the target if you're hitting a straight ball. If you're shaping it, you should never be hitting at the target. Take Montgomery, for example. Obviously a different shape, he's fading, but he was aiming everything up the left. We stood behind him in Mauritius and watched him play for a few holes, and he aimed everything up the left, didn't aim at the target. The flip side to that, open champion, Tom Lehman, drew everything, never tried it in fades, and he aimed up the right, so he played with what he's got. So if you don't want to tackle the angles, which you'll do in the second part of the fix, I would definitely try a few shots aiming up the right to try and feel that turn coming back towards the target. And it's about finding the patterns. So what I mean by that is my 7-iron will feel more drawy than, say, my 17-degree hybrid. He's a bit loud. And my rinky-dink, my 23-degree hybrid, will feel more drawy then say again my 17 degrees. So I'll aim in slightly different places for those two clubs. Some people think this is kind of a bit defeatist. They come for lessons and say, well, I don't want to do that. I want to aim correctly. Aiming correctly means hitting target. This is such a basic lesson, but one I think that is so kind of taught out of golfers through internet lessons of doing it right and hitting the right positions. And even pros on lesson tees wanting to fix things that sometimes don't need fixing. There's a lot of good movements in there. We're going to talk about the face if you want the other option. I would definitely play with your aim. You're aiming at the target with someone who looks like you could draw a shot. Aim a bit down the right. Coach is at the wheel now. We are north. Oh, there we are. Kind of York area, I think. So there's York on that side anyway. It's good enough for me. We're about two hours out, I think. Here we go. Drive us in, Lockie. It's one of those days where it's like the afternoon and I still feel like it's like 9.30 in the morning because <laughs> I've done anything yet. <laughs> Can I share something with you, Matt, that upsets me? Yeah. Watch this, look, as good as you can. So here's my apple juice. And I'm quite thirsty, so I'm gonna have some of my apple juice, okay? So I'm gonna release the cap, the tightened cap on top, okay? You ready? Yeah. So the cap has been released, so I'm thinking now I'm very close 
to consuming the apple juice that I, I'm ready for it. Like I can, my lips are going, my tongue, my throat, my whole brain is tingling because it knows it's gonna get hit. So I release the cap and I think, right, here we go. Oh, yeah. And I, what, what, what is that? Like this apple juice, is apple juice like strong enough to penetrate that cap? Like does it, why can other drinks get away with that? I mean, Coke and road stuff, doesn't it? Or any other popular Coke drink, drink to Is that liable, <laughs> what I just said? <laughs> but apparently that apple juice needs a double seal. So not only do I have to, so I have to do this. Now, I've, now what do I do with that? You keep it until you get home because it's illegal to get rid of your lavish out of car. Yeah, well I would. <laughs> I never would chuck it out of the car. So then, I'm now ready. And I've sipped it, and it was everything I wanted it to be. Just a few minutes later. But now look, I'm putting the cap on. Oh, but apparently it's all right now for me to not have that bit on. Like apparently now I can have this consumed throughout the day, and it's absolutely fine that that is an option. Do you think all apple juices have it? Do you know what I reckon it is? I've just actually thought what it might be. Oh. Well, do you reckon that keeps it fresher for longer, so somehow the apple juice would react to the, because obviously they've got to store this for a number of days, apple juice being more natural product. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it's that, fresh. that's going to well. keep it fresher, where if you just had a plastic top. So actually, I quite like that now. Isn't that a good idea? <laughs> Let's answer your questions. Hi, Mark. I've got a question for you. I'm in the market to buy some new irons. I'm confused about why manufacturers do their lofts in the way they do. Many of the game improvement irons that I'm looking at, I'm a 17 handicapper, gaps between the wedges and the 9 iron, 8 irons, that kind of thing, are 5 or 6 degrees. And the gaps down the bottom end, the 2, the 3, the 4, whether it's a hybrid or an iron, can only be 2 or maybe 3 degrees. Why is it that manufacturers have big loft gaps in the area where you want to have small ones and small loft gaps where you can get away with having big ones. Why isn't there just four degrees between each club? Looking forward to hearing your answer. Cheers, bro. So the loft thing with manufacturers, as Matt is pointing out here, which I agree with, is that it's kind of a distance launch monitor era for people selling clubs. So what happens is they're strengthening things to try and make you feel like you're hitting your seven iron, which is actually lofted in length, like a six iron further, because on a launch monitor, that's gonna sell all day long. If you do that though, you're gonna have gaps down that bottom end. So you need to be thinking about your wedge combinations and your gap wedge solutions. It's something I wouldn't worry about as well. Just play the lofts that you get. It's not something to worry about. 17 handicap, worrying about the lofts of your clubs is gonna be like a tiny percentage of you improving compared to the bigger issues, which is why you can't control the face of the path in relationship to maybe a lower handicapper. So it's one of those things as well, I think, where it's people looking at specs and watching reviews and reading too much into it a bit. Yeah. The skill set isn't there, making sure you've got the exact loss. To be honest with you, in my era and still now, I don't really worry about my lofts that much to even know I could tell you what they are. Apart from I know what my wedge area and I also know my top end area for my hybrids and stuff like that. Yeah, and I would say if they are, if you are going to get fit, just be careful what line you go up to. There's no point in going for a free iron if it's not going to carry much further than your five iron and stuff like that because the lofts aren't that different. Yeah, I agree. So watch what lofts you get or what's the longest club you carry. And I do that. Most sets I see people gaming, they're stopping at five irons nowadays. Can remember that is still pretty much a four iron if you're going game improvement. Ryan Little. <laughs> Close house, lovely evening for nine holes it coach, is, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So just playing close house before the big mega match tomorrow. After the long drive yesterday, or oh, today, it was today, today wasn't yeah, it? it? Oh, it's got one of those speed controls on this house. I want to go so much faster. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, there we go. Oh, speed bump. Fantastic. 
Yeah. Fan my bloody, oh, that's a good drive. Someone's it in there. Good shot, everyone. Good shot. Whoever that person was, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> So next idea is a bit around a bit of club face control. And what we're going to think about is exit point. So often you can change a student's feelings and movements on the way back by getting them to try and exit differently on the way through. And also with a different kind of shape in mind as well. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of the follow through where we see the club twisted this way on the way through. So where the club is almost putting down the fairway. So we're going to think about that position on the way through. Nothing about backswing or particularly downswing apart from getting into that position while at the same time feeling like you're going to try and actually start the ball a little bit up the left so rather than maybe down the right like we talked about earlier i want you to start seeing shots starting up the left so i want you to get a feeling on the way through that your club face is now actually pointing more behind you so what we would call holding on just cross your hands on the club this way i've done this a lot before i do it with students a lot so my right hand basically say facing let's go towards the target or we'll do target this way actually for the better view I want you to just feel like as you come through like this hand your right hand is just holding that club off obviously you would be much more this way so I want you to feel like you're holding off keeping that face pointing or over left shoulder on the way through while at the same time getting the feeling that the direction of the club is more leftward on the way through so it's a feeling of pulling left with a hold off lots of practice swings and shots this way and then taking it to the range and see what shots it gives you i think it might straighten you out take any of the curvature off lots of times i do that with students they feel very fady very cutty what happens is it takes all the curvature off their shots if their path stays relatively straight then they start hitting some more straighter shots get rid of those pulls some people feel more comfortable aiming out the right and kind of dropping the pin in the middle of their dispersion some people feel more comfortable doing it that way there is a group of people who do it this way and find it so hard because they're such natural drawers they're better off aiming up the right let me know which one you are there we go Matt that's Newcastle my bathroom has a heated floor so is mine it's very nice it's nice I leave lent against the radiator it's so hot <laughs> Like, someone, like, pinch me, I said, what? Is that Newcastle Stadium? No. On the left, it must be. Just New, here. Newcastle Football Stadium. I don't know, post comments, is it? I thought it was a bit more like we drove past it down on the road by the quay. Is it a key down like, by the water? I know what you're saying though, it, it does. It like buildings and then it looks like it's behind it. Yeah, it, it must be. It must be. Now tell us in the comments, we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I reckon it is. More TP balls to be won today, Matthew. Ooh, we're I've really already in. posted a post on my Facebook page. Oh. So go over, share it, like that Facebook page, and they can win. Awesome. A dozen. I need to choose the winner from yesterday. Can you do the honours, Matthew? Slide away. I'll tell you when to stop. I'm not looking. Oh, Why don't you stop now? Oh, there Jack. you go. Well done. Jack. Yeah. It is Jack Collier. You've won. I will email you now. You've won the TP ball. <laughs> if you want to win tomorrow, get over to my Facebook page. Remember to thumbs up the videos if you love the daily vlogs. Also, subscribe to the channel just down there. We've got a mega match tomorrow, Matthew. <laughs> Be mega. I can, my lips are going, my tongue, my throat, my whole brain is tingling because it knows it's going to get hit.